From time to time, our mind wanders to the extreme parts of our very consciousness that wonders about the things we don't even dare dream. Like, who or what created everything? And before there was anything, was there still something? There's very little room with a question like this to say, yeah, there's always been stuff, therefore there's always been life. The very fact of the matter is that at some point in time, there absolutely must have been a beginning, or so our mind tells us. There is a chance that the answer to this question is beyond human comprehension, therefore we can't grasp a proper answer. For some reason we're drawn to the sky for answers to the question of our purpose on Earth. Since the dawn of time, we wondered what the hell we're doing here. If you ever woke up at a stranger's house after a party, well, that feeling of disorientation is a feeling we humans have lived with on Earth. It's as if the planet we're told created us didn't have anything to do with us until fairly recently. Here's a thought. What if the entire universe is exactly one thing? One cell living within an unimaginably big organism, which has billions of quadrillions of other cells. That many individual cells, or universes as we call them, make up a living thing that we may refer to as the creator. That'd make a good episode of Rick and Morty, right? The Emerald Tablet of Hermes states that as above, so below. It's said to be inscribed with the secrets of the universe. The source of the original Emerald Tablet is unclear, hence it's surrounded by legends. The most common legend claims that the tablet was found in a cave tomb under the statue of Hermes in Tiana, clutched in the hands of the corpse of Hermes Trismegistus himself. Another legend suggests that it was the third son of Adam and Eve, Seth, who originally wrote it. Others believe that the tablet was once held within the Ark of the Covenant. Thoth was among the most diverse and popular deities of the Egyptian pantheon. He's attested in the Old Kingdom and was regarded since the most primitive period as the god of the moon. Hence, Thoth derived much of his authority from being the secretary and counselor to the sun god Ra. He became the regulator of time and individual destinies. It's sensational to think that ancient documents such as the Emerald Tablet or the Dead Sea Scrolls exist from a time that we know very little about. Even with contributions and translations from the crisscrossing of documents from different languages and religions, we still only get a gist of the story that's truly epic in every sense of the word. Another text which was discovered right around the same time as the Dead Sea Scrolls is the absolutely enlightening but very controversial Gnostic texts. Wait till you hear this. Discovered in 1945 and quickly sold on the black market through antiquities dealers in Cairo, the manuscript soon attracted the attention of officials of the Egyptian government. Through circumstances of high drama, they bought one and confiscated ten and a half of the thirteen leather-bound books called codices, and deposited them in the Coptic Museum in Cairo. But a large part of the thirteenth codex, containing five extraordinary texts, was smuggled out of Egypt and offered for sale in America. Word of this codex soon reached Professor Giles Quisbel, a distinguished historian of religion at Eurecht in the Netherlands. Excited by the discovery, the professor urged the Jung Foundation in Zurich to buy the codex. After discovering some pages were missing, he flew to Egypt in the spring of 1955 to try to find them in the Coptic Museum. Arriving in Cairo, he went at once to the museum, borrowed photographs from some of the texts, and hurried back to his hotel to decipher them. Tracing out the first line, the professor was startled as he deciphered the first line, which read, These are the secret words which the living Jesus spoke, and which the twin, Judas Thomas, wrote down. This discovery of the whole texts raised a new question. Did Jesus have a twin brother, as the text implies? Could the text be an authentic record of Jesus' sayings? According to its title, it contained the Gospel according to Thomas, yet unlike the Gospels of the New Testament, this text identified itself as a secret Gospel. Professor Quizbell also discovered that it contained many sayings known from the New Testament, but these sayings placed unfamiliar contexts, suggested other dimensions of meaning. Other passages he found differed entirely from any known Christian tradition. The living Jesus, for example, speaks in sayings as if both cryptic and compelling. Jesus said, If you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. What the professor held in his hand, the Gospel of Thomas, was only one of the 52 texts discovered in 1945. 
Bound in the same volume with it is the Gospel of Philip, which attributes to Jesus' acts and sayings quite different from those in the New Testament. The companion of the Savior is Mary Magdalene, but Christ loved her more than all the disciples, and used to kiss her often. The rest of the disciples said to him, Why do you love her more than all of us? The Savior answered and said to them, Why do I not love you as I love her? Other sayings in this collection criticize common Christian beliefs, such as the virgin birth or the bodily resurrection, as naive misunderstandings. Bound together with these Gospels is the Apocryphon, which literally means secret book of John, which opens with an offer to reveal the mysteries of the things hidden in silence which Jesus taught to his disciple John. The discoverer of the text incredibly admitted that some of the texts were lost, burned up, or thrown away because he feared he and his family would be punished by the Egyptian government for grave robbing. But what remains is astonishing. Some 52 texts from the early centuries of the Christian era, including a collection of early Christian gospels, previously unknown. Besides the Gospel of Thomas and the Gospel of Philip, the find also included the Gospel of Truth and the Gospel to the Egyptians, which identified itself the sacred book of the great invisible spirit. Another group of texts consists of writings attributed to Jesus' followers such as the secret book of James, the apocalypse of Paul, the letter of Peter to Philip, and the apocalypse of Peter. You have to wonder about the validity of such texts that appear to have survived from a time in history in which they were written, uninfluenced, or altered since they were first created. In that sense, there must be more truth within these words than our modern day translations. Anyway, we hope you guys are all set for the holidays. A lot has changed on this channel since last Christmas, as you very well may know, and it's you guys who have driven us forward as we created over 200 videos in 2018. It's been a bumpy ride, and it's only gonna get bumpier, so join us on the journey as we attempt to gently peel back the lies and reveal the truth about our civilization. And remember, the ways at which we arrive at knowledge is hardly less wonderful than the discovery of these things themselves. Thanks for watching.